In this figure, I've plotted the term structure of interest rates. So just to reiterate, on the x-axis, we've got the maturity of a series of bullet bonds. And on the y-axis, we've got the interest rate of each one of those bullet bonds. So the way we think about the term structure of interest rates these days is as follows. If we were to actually pull the data, we would only see one of these lines. And that line is the gray line right there. That line, that actual term structure of interest rate, we think of as being composed of a number of different components. The first component, which I've plotted down here in blue, is the term structure of real rates. So remember that investing is all about delaying consumption today so you can consume more in the future. This term structure of real rates is the um, return for, in terms of real consumption for each maturity of bond, of bullet bond. So in this figure, I've plotted it as a flat line, but it doesn't have to be flat. It could be increasing, it could be decreasing, it's whatever the market decides. Once we have the, the, the term structure of real rates, we need to adjust for inflation. Be, uh, remember that inflation erodes our real purchasing power. So this gap right here, that's our uh, real rate of return, that term structure. On top of that, we add an inflation premium. That's the gap between the blue line and the orange line. This, the orange line here, would be our nominal term structure of interest rates. So if we were to actually look at the bond, what the dollar amount of the, the coupon would be, would be based off the nominal rate here. But that nominal rate is composed of two components. One component is the real rate, and the other component is uh, based off uh, uh, inflation expectations. So if a bond was riskless, so the return was known with certainty, the term structure of interest rates would be this orange line. But we know that every bond in real life has some sort of risk. To account for those risks, we add something that we call the risk premium for a particular bond. So the, the risk premium is the gap between the orange line and the blue line. This risk premium can be the any sort of risk that we want. So this risk uh, could be a liquidity risk, it could be credit risk, it could be um, inflation rate risk. It really could be any risk that we think a particular bond has. Notice that the risk premium, as I've drawn it, is not constant. So when the maturity of a bond is short, that gap in the risk premium is smaller than when the maturity of the bond is a bit longer. This doesn't have to be the case, but we tend to think of uh, risk as increasing with the maturity of a bond because there's simply more uncertainty the longer the maturity of a bond. So to reiterate, we've got um, the term structure of interest rate is composed of three distinct sections. One is the, the term structure in real rates, which is plotted here in blue. Then we tack on inflation expectation, which is this difference between the orange line and the blue line. And then to account for risk, we add a risk premium, which is the gap between the orange line and this gray line. What we would observe in the actual data is the gray line, but like I said, it's composed of a number of distinct components.